Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. This morning, we have the privilege and opportunity to listen to the word of the Lord as our devotional message on the topic, the God of visions. The God of visions. And our scripture reading is taken from Acts of Apostles, chapter 18, from verse 6 to 11. But let us begin with a word of prayer. Our loving Father, Lord, we thank you for this time we are going to spend in your presence to study your word. We ask that, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, help us to understand it so that we may get the right message in it that is applicable in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Acts chapter 18, verse 6 to 11 reads this way. When the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler and his entire household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who had him believed and were baptized. Verse 9, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. For I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. 11, so Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. We're looking at the God of visions. But pressing from verse 6, we see the unbelieving Jews opposed Paul and blasphemed him. Here we see to reject the gospel is ultimately to oppose oneself. The unbeliever harms no one so much as himself or as herself. Paul shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So the shaking of his clothing was an expressive act signifying his disassociation from them. However, this did not prevent his going to the synagogue in another city, namely Ephesus. So the apostles' words are a solemn reminder to every believer that there is such a thing as blood guiltiness. The Christian is a debtor to all men. If he or she fails to discharge that date by proclaiming the gospel, God will hold him or her responsible. If, on the other hand, he or she faithfully witnesses for Christ and meets with stubborn refusal, then he or herself is free from guilt. And the responsibility rests with the Christ's rejecter. Now, this verse represents another step in the setting aside of the nation of Israel and the proclamation of the gospel to the Gentiles. 
God had decreed that the good news should go to the Jews first, but throughout Acts, as the nation of Israel rejects the message, the spirit of God sorrowfully turns aside from that people. In verse seven and eight, following the outburst of the Jews, the apostle went to the home of Justus, who was a Gentile convert to Judaism, who believed, a Gentile convert to Judaism, who lived actually next to the synagogue. So as he carried on his ministry from this base, the apostle Paul, had the joy of seeing Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, with all his household come to the Lord. So many other Corinthians trusted in the Savior and they were baptized. Paul baptized Crispus and a few others. If we read another scripture in 1 Corinthians 1, 14 to 16, but his usual practice was to have some other believer do the, bapti the baptizing. So Paul feared that people would form a party around himself. So instead of being undistracted in their love and loyalty to the Lord Jesus. In verse 9 and 10, the Lord graciously spoke to Paul in the night by a vision, assuring him that there was nothing to be afraid of. So the apostle Paul should continue to preach the word, assured of God's presence and protection. There were many people in the city who longed or who belonged to the Lord in the sense that he was working in their lives and they will ultimately be saved. So Paul stayed in Corinth 18 months and teaching the word of God. So a very valuable background material concerning this period is found in first and second Corinthians. So brethren like Paul, let us not fear the vision that God gave to online church of Uganda to start this ministry will be carried on to the next level once we cast out our fear unto the Lord because this work was begun by God. Let us have that confidence in him alone who began this ministry through us. Let us pray. Loving Father, with gratitude deep down, down from our hearts. We know when you begin something, you bring it to the completion. We have that confidence in you that the great work you began through us on the platform of Church of Uganda, you'll bring it to its fulfillment, to reach its target that already you purposed from the very beginning. Therefore, we want to be submissive to your leading. And when we get visions and insights, Help us to carry on with that what you have revealed to us. For in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.